Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is now just under four months away from its official release by writer and director J.J. Abrams and Chris Terrio, as well as creator George Lucas. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, what's really exciting about Episode 9 is that we do know that this film is going to have many different revelations that will lead to saga-wide implications in this story, as well as many different twists and turns that are going to change how we view the past eight Star Wars movies. Now, now with that all being done and said, what we do know about Episode 9 is that this film is said to be a very dark Star Wars movie, and that's exactly how Disney and Lucasfilm want to market this film through the months of August, September, October, and November, leading up until its release come this December. Now, these past couple of weeks or so, we've been learning a whole lot more about this film, and when it all comes down to one of the concept art descriptions, this is where things begin to get very exciting for Episode 9. Now, specifically, what's really intriguing about all of this is that shot descriptions consisting of a sequence where it's explained that Kylo Ren and his Knights of Ren are traveling into the abandoned Imperial base, where it's explained that he comes across Palpatine's vault that contains many secrets that were locked away years ago. It's described that eventually Kylo and the Knights of Ren break through the blast doors and discover many secrets of the Empire and Palpatine. It's said that Kylo Ren comes across a large hologram of the plans of a third Death Star, where it's explained that Snoke actually used parts of Palpatine's design to build a Starkiller base many years ago while in hiding. Though the third Death Star was never complete, parts of the weapons were designed and that Palpatine had a plan for the third Death Star to not only hold the ability to tear itself through space stations, but also had four large laser cannons powered by kyber crystals on all, on all four sides of the weapon itself to attack from multiple angles at once. Now, it's explained that Palpatine used this as a failsafe and that part of the design was actually discovered by Snoke and used it to build Starkiller Base. One of the larger blasters for Starkiller Base were actually used and taken from Imperial construction sites in the Outer Rim and used for the main weapon on Starkiller and that it held Death Star 3 technology. The same goes for the First Order Annihilators in Episode 9, which also hold technology of the third Death Star. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, we do know that Episode 9 is going to unveil many secrets of the Empire, as well as the origins of the First Order, and Palpatine's original plans out there, as well as Secrets of Sidious. Now, what I love so much about this is that this is giving us a clue of what Palpatine would have done if he lived on past Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, and of course, if the Death Star 2 was never destroyed. Now, what I like about this also is that this is Kylo Ren discovering that Snoke actually used Death Star 3 technology in order to power Starkiller Base. And not just that, now the First Order, and of course Supreme Leader Ren, use the third Death Star technology as a way to power the First Order Annihilators. In case you guys have no idea what they are, those are the new super weapons in Episode 9, the First Order Annihilators. They are basically new versions of the world all devastators from the EU, where we have these large weapons that are powered by the third Death Star technology that are actually attached to large star destroyers that actually beam down to planets. Now, what I like about this so much is that this is giving us an idea of where things are going for Episode 9 and, of course, the future of the Star Wars franchise and the canon material throughout the year of 2020. We're going to learn more about everything that comes in between these Star Wars movies. Now, with that being said, with Palpatine actually having a plan for the third Death Star, there was a plan in place where it would have four different beams, all right, four different laser cannons powered by kyber crystals on each and every side of the sphere. Now, what I like like about that is that that is of course Palpatine upping his game, pretty much using this as a concept as a way to protect himself or to protect the Empire at the time from even destroying itself from of course the Rebellion or whatever organization may have came their way. Now what I like about this also is that this is giving us also a better idea of how they're implementing a lot of Death Star technology into the First Order designs. In case you guys did not know, in The Last Jedi, that large cannon at the very end of the film on crate that actually bursts its way through the blast door in the rebellion base that's actually also powered by death star i believe it was 
2 technology. So with that being said, in episode 9, we're going to be learning a whole lot more about the secrets of the Empire, the origins of the First Order, and not just in the film, but also in the novelization and in the visual dictionary, we will be learning a lot more about everything that happened before the events of episode 7, The Force Awakens. You can really see how much detail J.J. Abrams wants to include in this film and how much in depth he wants to go into the origins of, you know, the First Order and the secrets of the Empire and, of course, Palpatine himself. So, with that being said, guys, I would really love to hear what you all have to say about this below in the comments about the third Death Star and its use and how the technology transferred over to the First Order. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.